All right, I'm joined by Fran Gavin, Director of Competitions with the FAI. Fran, we thought this Bray Wanderer story was done and dusted, and then a statement came out from the FAI last night about this escrow account where €300,000 will be put in place, a safety net, if you'd like, for players, that if clubs get in trouble, the players will always be paid. 150000 from the FAI, 150000 from the PFAI. The PFAI say they knew nothing about this. Can you talk us through the last few days and, and how this statement came about and how this fund came about without the knowledge of the PFAI? Well, look at uh, the, the PFAI's general secretary was on the radio last Thursday to say that uh, it needs to have a fund set up and there'll be fund set up. So, you know, you can read that what it, you want into that. Um, this is about the players. I mean, need to, need to, people seem to forget that this is about the players. It's not about the PFAI. It's not about the FAI. It's about the players. The issues we've had in Bray and we've had in Limerick, which are well documented and have been resolved, is something that is very negative to the league, and the players are on the brunt end of that. Um, this fund is being put in place to give those players insurances and in comfort, and it's a positive. If I was a player now, I'd be I'd be taking this very positively. Um, and that is to ensure that if those issues happen again, which are unforeseen mm. in, those, in, in, in those two clubs, um, then they have an assurance that their contracts can be honoured and will be honoured. And, and I mean, this is asking the PFEI to put up 150,000, the FEI 150,000, um, and the PFEI have the means to do that. This money will be um, topped up again if, if a club taps into it, and hopefully this will never be used. And, and this is a positive for us. It's, it's the initial issues that were around Bray, we had to try and resolve them, and we, that was our priority, to resolve them, to get the players paid. And then what's going to happen going forward? And going forward, we want this fund in place um, and to ensure that those players have comfort. Stephen McGuinness of the PFAI was on OTBAM this morning, and he agreed that the concept is the right one, but also described it as a point-scoring move, as a missile launch, turning it into a media circus. Why then were there no negotiations since last Thursday when the PFAI suggested that there should be a fund put in place? Why not talk to the FAI and get everything completely ironed out in terms of whether or not they have the funds available before putting out a statement at 5 o'clock yesterday evening? Look, at, around any issue, whether it's this, the clubs, uh, the, the recent Limerick and the recent um, uh, Bray Wanderers issue, you know, discussions are ongoing with everybody. Where, when, who and what we discuss is kept internally in the FAI and that continues. That's the way we've always conducted our business. Our only priority here is to make sure that the players have security. That's why the fund is there. So, you know, people are aware of things. People are, discussions are ongoing, but those discussions are internal to us and who we discuss things with and what they are about. It's not for the, in our case, the public domain. It's to get a solution. We're here to find a solution. Did the PFA found, know that we, they were being asked for 150,000 euro for we're this? Here to, we're here to find a solution. People are fully aware of the situation. That's what I'm saying to you. So, but they're saying you know, they weren't aware of the situation. That's the PFAI. That's fine. If that's their, their, their attitude. That's grand. The, the position. So here, you're saying that the, they the position, did know. What I'm saying is the position here is to get comfort for the players. The, the, the PFAI gave it a cautious welcome. I see that, and that's good to hear. But I think they realise that it's the right thing to do. They have the means to support this, and that's what we intend to do. And everybody accepts that people want players to be paid, and that is the bottom line, and getting them paid is everybody's interest, the FAI and the PFAI. But also, the PFAI are the players' representative body, and they're looking at the FAI and their, their attitude towards the PFAI, which is releasing statements, committing the PFAI to putting €150,000, as they see it, of players' own money into an escrow account to ensure that they'll be paid back their own money at some stage. There's clearly a breakdown in communication between the FAI and the PFAI. Well, look, at all I'm saying is that the, the, the sole aim here is to get players paid. That's what it's, we're doing. You know, discussions are ongoing around several issues, and, and we'll continue to that, but who we discuss with what we discuss, where and when we discuss those things, is kept internally with the FEI. We're here to find solutions to the problem. We're not here to point score. You know, we do, I met Stephen and I met the General Secretary of the PFEI um, only a couple of weeks ago to discuss issues. A lot's and gone on in the last couple of weeks. And, and we've, we've discussed it and we've corresponded with them on several things regarding meetings. Our job was fully focused on, and still is, find a solution. 
and trying to prevent it happening again. And what the announcement was yesterday is to ensure that those players have comfort. Not only the players in Bray or, or Limerick, but players in, in every club. The vast majority of our clubs do their businesses very well. Over the last three years, there's been 17 million spent by the clubs on players' wages, and all those monies have been met on time and as per contract. And that's through the work of the clubs meeting their commitments. So the vast majority of the clubs do that. This fund is in place that if an unforeseen circumstance happens again, then there is a contingency fund there to address that. That's what we're doing, and that's what we want to do. So the issue around, we're not here to score any points or anything like that, is to get a res resolution behind it. And we think we'll have a resolution in the long term. And I think that's what we try to do. I think the PFAI's um, focus is on getting the players our paid. Our focus is on getting the players paid. So, at the so end why of the day, can't you work together? So at the end of the day, there's a re there's a, there'll be a, a resolution to it. And how we achieve that is between, well, between ourselves and the various parties involved. You were due to meet the PFAI yesterday. That meeting then was pushed back to tomorrow. Well, can I just say tomorrow. on that, we're not aware of any meeting that was arranged yesterday or any meeting that was arranged on Friday. We are not aware of it, so I don't know where that has come from. You know, we're meeting various stakeholders at various times all the time. And we weren't aware of that, absolutely. That, that came as a news to me. Um, so I don't know where that's come from, but we're willing to, to meet with the, the various stakeholders. Uh, we've always said that, that we would do that. You know, but we are focused and our time is spent on trying to resolve the issues, not to have a, a media circus around things. Well, if you don't want a media circus, why then do you release the statement without having spoken to all the key stakeholders in advance so that if when I, this is because you say this should be a if everyone thinks it's a good idea it should be a good news story it goes out there everyone's in agreement we're not going to have these issues again there's a safety net for players people can relax and sleep a little bit easier instead of releasing the statement and we are into a media circus because the pfai say this is the first we've heard of it look who knew what where and when is well that's what we're trying to figure yeah, out but it, for people to to, to to make their own statements well on all it. we're hearing is but the I'm pfai side of it yeah, so this okay, is your I'm chance from you, the I'm fai side i'm telling you here you know, that what we're trying to achieve here is to get the players paid. That's what we're trying to do, so, and that's what we will do. Um, with, with this fund, it, we, we have done it. This, this fund comes in place, which we certainly hope it will do. Um, the PFAI fulfills their side of, of the commitment on it, um, then there'll be a comfort there for everybody. They have the means to do this and more, um, and we don't see any reason why they wouldn't. That would be positive. It'd be positive for everybody, the relations, and we can all move on and talk about the positive things that are happening around the league. Um, which is multiple positive things happening. Mm. The other side, and if you were to raise questions about the fund and why it's needed in the first place, if we had a tighter licensing structure, surely we shouldn't need this sort of fund. Look, Nathan, in any business, unforeseen circumstances happen. But Bray in, wasn't in, unforeseen. In any business, it happens. And particularly in the League of Ireland here, where you have a different structure, company set up, whether it can be an individual looking after a club, two people... Uh, funding into a club, uh, are the, the the members own in the club, mm. which is various different models of, of, of entities and businesses in in the SSE or Tricity League. You know, any industry in the world can have an unforeseen uh, issue, and that's what we saw here. It was unforeseen. It was an issue in Bray between two investors, which nobody anticipated, and the issues are well documented in Limerick. So those things unfortunately happen in any industry, and but what this has done, which is probably unique is that the fund will do is to say to, to players, when you sign your contract at that stage, there's a comfort there for you. There's an insurance blanket there for you to say, if, that, if this happens, then you will be paid, and you'll be paid through these funds, which the clubs have to replenish, and there will be sanctions on those clubs who do that. So the clubs need to do their business correctly, and the vast, vast majority of our clubs do that, and have continued to do that over the years that I've been involved with the SSE or Tristy League. With these issues happening then, and you feel that they were out of the blue and, and one-offs and not related to previous issues at Bray or at other clubs, do you still plan any sort of re review of the licensing system and of the independent committee and how that entire process is taken on ahead of next season? We review all our processes in the, in the SSE or Tristy League. You know, I think that's good business practice. Mm. Whether that's just, the just on that process, that's you might Sorry, that's it. the registration of the players. Mm. Whether that's the fixture scheduling, which was, there was there was a lot of commentary on this 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 season, or whether that's licensing, it's all reviewed. That's good biz, business practice. We do it every year, and we continue it. We get feedback from the various stakeholders, and that will be reflected on how we move forward. Do the owners of the clubs ever meet the independent licensing committee? It's it's they address it with the licensing department in the FAI, and they 
do the paperwork. There's a, there's a fairly detailed process that they go through, and then that's presented to the licensing committee. From from those, and then the clubs um, are told whether they have the license or not. It was based on their meetings and their their um, fulfilling the requirements that are set out by the FAI club licensing department. And if the licensing committee have questions, do they go back to the club? Or is it they would go back through one the, meeting through the FEI license, license department, the, the department, and into, and they would in turn go back into the clubs. We were talking to John Delaney just before you came in, and the one part that I don't think anybody can understand, looking from the outside at these sort of controversies, is that you share the same building. You say, and the PFAI say, that they want the best for footballers. Footballers in this country must feel like they've been used as pawns in some sort of a game because if you're only four doors down from each other, why do there's, does there need to be this very formal setting all the time? Why can't you just knock on a door when we've players not been paid for two months? Why can't people just knock on somebody's door and let's get this sorted no matter what? Why is there this constant back and forth of requests for meetings not being granted? I don't think the requests for meetings are not granted. The, 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 the PFA are fully aware and have been reminded on several occasions the protocol around issues in the league and how they, are the, how they are resolved and who to contact. And the contact is into the league office, it's myself as league director, and they need to follow that process. We have met the PFAI on several occasions. We've also uh, had correspondence with them on several, several occasions. So, you know, I think you need to ask the PFAI mm. why that situation has arisen. Steve McGinnis said they felt maybe with the issues surrounding the women's team last year that there's been a change in the atmosphere in the relationship between the FAI and the PFAI, would he be correct in that, that there's a different approach been taken towards the organisation? I don't. Our only approach here with all our stakeholders, whether it's the PFAI or anybody else, is what's good for, for football. And in the, in the case with the League of Ireland with the players, is what's good for the players. You know, we work with all stakeholders across all aspects of the game, and the PFAI are one of them. You know, so any relationship with them sometimes can be fraught, and we don't always disagree with things. Mm. But at the end of the day, we all want one thing, is to get the game better. We'll keep doing that, and I'm sure they'll do it as well. It does feel as though there's some sort of a communication issue here, both internally and externally. The message within to each other, the way you speak to each other, and the message that goes out that statements like this are being released, and then there's counterclaim and counterclaim. Does it need everybody in a room to sit down and just trash all this out once and for all? Look, we're all, we've always been open to, to get anything that makes the game better. And any relationship with our stakeholders, if it can be improved, we'll try and improve it. But it works both ways. The responsibility is on all stakeholders to act responsibly around these, these situations. We do our business internally. We don't do it out in the public. We just don't. We're not into it. We try and resolve the, the issues internally. Mm. We need to have that. There is a trust issue between the FAI, I think, at the moment. That's fair to say. And the PFAI. I think that's, being unfor that's unfortunate. Do you trust but, them? But, well, look at Unfortunately, we don't do our business in the public domain. That's what we don't do. These issues can be resolved internally and quickly. But anything that you know is feels like there's a media circus around it, that, that that's affects all the various stakeholders that are involved in solving the issue and sometimes you know that's not just one person but it's a lot of other people around the area uh, around the situation and you need to be sensitive around that and you need to be careful how you do your business around mm -hmm. that we try to do it internally and and i'm sure look at like all um relationships and with state various stakeholders um, we try and work with them but it's responsibility on both sides to make sure they act responsible and professional and you feel that they've let down that side? I'm saying to you, there is responsibility on both sides to act professionally and responsible. All right, Fran, thanks a lot for your time. Okay.